What is going on, everybody? Good morning. Good Sunday morning to you. I am on the ice, as you can see. Um, this morning, I wanted to walk over and see if we could jig for some walleyes. And the goose hunters are over there again, which is totally fine. But I made sure I brought everything to see if we can get some catfish through the ice. Uh, Zach with 12 height caught a real dandy catfish yesterday, uh, and I lost two of them yesterday. So we're gonna try for some catfish. So I just wanted to show you what I'm doing here. This is just, I put eight pound line on this, on this pole uh, yesterday, and I put a circle hook on it, not a very big one. And I, I have some stinky old sucker meat. And I'm just gonna hook that through a piece of sucker. That skin is tough. Oh, come on, baby. It's a little bit rotten, which is good. And I got two Vexlars running. Good, I didn't get it on my hands. This stuff, oh my gosh, goodness, you should see the oil that came off this stuff. And I'm just gonna drop this down to the bottom. I've already seen some marks on the Vex. So I'm gonna drop this down to the bottom. Boom, and I'm going to give it, on this one I'm going to leave the bale open for now. And on this one over here, I've got just a small treble hook, and I, I left my fly on there, just in case something else wants to, wants to play. But ran over to the Wally World, and got some chicken liver and blood. Now this bait I've used a lot in the past, and it works great. But a little, a little tip here, if you drop drop one in your bag, right? So you got one in the bag. I'm just watching that line because there is catfish in here and they are hungry. And then you use the bag as a glove. So then you don't get that nasty crap on your hands and you're smelling that crap all dang day. And just get it pressed onto that hook. And you gotta try to keep this stuff a little bit warm. Not hot because it'll dry out, but boom, got her done. Now I'll drop it down this hole. This hole here, I was, I was getting marks. As soon as I opened it up, and I'm freezing to the, it's 17 degrees when I got here, so. No weight, drop it down. The stuff will sink, you know. If you're, if you're bank fishing, you definitely need some weight to get her down there, but. And in no hurry here. And boom, that's on the bottom. I'm just going to let it sit. Give it, this one I'm not going to leave the bale open because it's a pain in the butt when it starts free-schooling. So that's it. And bag up your, your chicken liver and blood. And hopefully here soon, we'll have a cat going. If the, if the cats don't start moving, I'll pull up, one of these, pull up one of these rods and start going for some small bluegill or something. Or, we caught quite a bit of bluegill in this location yesterday and, and uh, crappie. But hopefully we can get a couple cats and do a catch and cook for you guys tonight. Do some fish tacos. You keep seeing fish tacos on the fishing videos so and hearing fish tacos. So we're going to do some fish tacos. But now it's just a waiting game. Sip on some coffee and relax. So hope everybody's enjoying their, their Sunday morning. And guys, hit that subscribe button. That helps me out tremendously. Um, and my oldest daughter, Natters, you should have came. You should have came. I would have brought the hut for you in the heater. So we'll let you know what's happening, guys. It is 7.29, and we'll see how long it takes for a cat to come find us. Okay, it's uh, 7.33, and this, this area is acting like there's a, a catfish on it. I don't want to yank it. See the line moving there? I don't know if you can see it with the GoPro, but I'm watching both poles. There's a big red mark on it. Now that stuff's super soft, so if he just gums it, sometimes he can get it to pop off the, the treble hook there. But I was hoping, you know, they'll just, the standard catfish maneuver, just take it and run. Um, I know it's cold water and whatnot, but they'll still do that. But it looks like the red mark moved on. But we did definitely have something, something nubbling. I mean, sure, a bluegill could have been hitting on it, but by the size of that mark. I mean, that that mark was probably a quarter inch tall on the Vexilar. So, 
No, looks like he's, unless he's hugging right on the bottom now, because he was way above, oh, something just broke off, a bubble or something, coming up to the hole. That'd be something if our bait came up here. All right, well, I'll let it sit. I'll let this bait, since it got touched, I'll let it sit till about, it's about 7.40 if something doesn't happen, and I'll check it, because it is so a soft bait. So, um, like I said, he can squeeze it, and it will pop off that treble hook. So, so yeah, man, I, I thought we were going to get into it right away there. The line was moving, everything was happening. So, beautiful morning to be out here. Absolutely beautiful. I'll show those mountains over there. We need way more snow on this. Oh, the house is right there. I mean, this, this little pond is definitely underfished. Uh, it's a great resource. Get your kids out to your local bodies of water, guys. Okay, so this line is being pulled right now. I'm going to pull up this one. Let's see if we can set the hook on this cat on this on the circle hook here. It's pulling. It's going. Got him. Got him. It doesn't feel like a monster. Let's get the transducer out. I'm going to angle the thing here a little bit more for you. Got him. Come on, baby. Keep coming. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, the, I put eight pound line on here because I'm a big sissy. Whoop, too much. I'm a big sissy and I don't like losing fish, breaking fish off. So, come on. Oh. At first, he didn't feel like a big one. I'm hoping he's two, three-ish pounds, which I'm pretty confident he is by the way he's fighting. I just don't want to horse him, even though I know this line's heavier than he is, but a little nick or a little nick or a bad knot on my hook. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. There he is. Look at that right there. Look at that right there. That's a perfect eating catfish right there. And look, the circle hook right inside of his mouth. Look, came right out. That, that is the ticket right there, y'all. Look at that gem. Cool. Cool, cool. So we're going to eat him. We'll do a little catch and cook. It'd be nice to have one more. I got a family of four on feet. Well, the wife, she won't eat the, eat the fish, but she'll eat a taco. So I'd like to have one more about this size, but that's fantastic right there. Awesome. So just to show you guys one more time what I'm doing. Get the vex back in there. Let's go to my, my jet sled. Cut bait. And it looks like there's still another mark down there, so we might get lucky and lucky and get another one as soon as we drop down there. So I like to go smaller pieces and this stuff sinks the high you know what. So I try not to get too much of it on my gloves or my fingers. gonna glove it because I ain't, I'm excited. I want to get back down there and do some fishing. But you see how he was running. Oh, this stuff's a little, a little frozen. Let them, let them cats run. And then you set the hook on them, right? Get some snow. Get that nasty oily crap off your hands. That should be enough line. Twist it up. Just let it go down to the bottom. I just let it open spooled it so he could run with it and then set the hook. So we're on the bottom. New cut piece of bait. And yeah, that's it. We'll get this other one. The blood bait dropped back down. I'll probably put a new piece of 
flood bait on that, but it is 8.18, not quite an hour. So 50 minutes it took us to, to get hooked up on that cat. So that's a good eating cat right there. That is a dandy. So I'll let you guys know if anything else is happening. We're actually having good luck with the camera today. Well, 10.36, we've been fishing just over three hours. And we've got the one catfish. I checked shallower, nothing. And I don't want to go too much deeper. We've got some open water over there. we got some open water over there. Uh, I mean, it's getting well below freezing at night, but during the day, I mean, I bet it's already 40 degrees out here. I'm burning up, so. I think I'm gonna pack it in for today and get home and show you guys how I make my fish tacos. I make them different every time, but one of my favorite recipes is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys. So I'll get packed up, we'll get home, we'll skin the catfish, fillet the catfish, and I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, all right. I've got the catfish skinned and filleted out, okay? If you guys wanna see a, a filleting video, or, or a skinning video, let me know. Now this first fillet is from Zach's from yesterday. This thing's a monster. Look at the size of this guy. I just wanted to show you something on these bigger fish. Right here, if you see, see that darker meat, that's all fat bloody meat. I try to get as much of that out of there as possible because it just, it, when you cook it, it turns, you know, brownish to gray. And it's just horrible tasting. So, don't want to take too much off. So I try to get as much of that off as possible. A little piece of skin there. Zach did a good job of playing this out. I think this was his first Colorado, Colorado uh, catfish for the Ohio boy. So he did okay. So, Let's get that all cleaned up and I'll show you what I do here. I hope I got everything prepared so I don't have to keep turning the camera on and off to, to find stuff. A little bit right there. Okay, so you got a little bit of fat right here down the vein. Get that out of there. The way we're gonna prepare this, the, nobody's even gonna notice. So, this bottom part, boom. Slice that off, good to go. And then just slice these up in the in the chunks, okay? Kind of felt like I just sliced through a bone. Oh. There's a bone. Yep. So, get that bone out of there because you know the kids they they find a bone and they flip out so slice them into three quarter one inch slices somewhere around there because this does not take long to cook i keep thinking i'm feeling some bones but Maybe it's just the way the knife's breaking through the through the meat. So that's our trash pile. Sorry about the camera moving. I couldn't think of a good way to do an angle of the dangle for that camera. Here's the one I caught this morning. Oh, dry it off. Make sure it's nice and dry. We'll do the same thing. This one here we could just in a couple pieces. You know what? I think we'll do that. Just go right on down. And this one's got a little bit of fat on the outside, but we're gonna leave it, boom. Okay. You know, we're, we're making tacos, so you're gonna put it in a, well, some people like, like, uh, like flour tortillas or something. I like taco shells. Okay. Boom. Done dealio. Done dealio. All right, so we'll get, put that to the side and close that up. Now we'll make our, part of our yum yums so Dijon mustard guys I like to do the honey because it you know gives you a little sweet taste put a whole mess of that in there 
Boom, that should be enough. Mmm, smells delicious. And I just made a big old mess. Made a big old mess. So clean up my mess before I make a bigger mess, right? Now, you can use soy sauce. I like to use liquid aminos. Give a little bit of that in there. So that the honey offsets some of the, the salt in those aminos or soy sauce. A couple shots of Frank's in there. Put that stuff on everything, right? Am I right? Okay. Let's get that all mixed up together. It doesn't take a lot. Make sure it's good and then add your fish. Okay. Oh man, that smells so good coming out of that bag. We're gonna bake this fish. We're not gonna fry it. I've had fish any type which way you can imagine. And uh, I like baking it. Make sure everything's good and coated. Sorry I keep tilting the camera on you. The wife was all scared that I was gonna have showing the dirty kitchen. Boom, set that to the side. Now. Okay, so let's set this to the side. All that trash. We'll bring our tray over. We'll talk about the tray here in a minute. And then I get another Ziploc bag. And I'm a big, huge fan of Zatarans. A lot of other people, you know, make so many different uh, fish fries, but I like Zatarans a lot. It used to not come in the plastic bag, it was just in the box, boom. So let's get that Zatarans going. I got the oven, it is preheated and done. A little breading on there. Okay, so we're cleaned up there. Oh, I made a mess, good lord. Good lord. That's okay, if I'm not making a mess, something's not right. Okay, so then take your fish and don't over overload the, the zatarans guys you know put a couple pieces in there shake them about do the hokey pokey if you want good fish you don't rush this just like a good sandwich don't rush that sandwich okay Shake her about a little bit. Cool. That's about it. That's all you got to do. Then shake off the excess. And I like to put it on a jerky tray so when it bakes, it's not sitting in its own juices. You can fry it just like this too. I thought I put four pieces in there. I did. Just load it back up. I am making quite the mess. We'll grab a little bit more this time. But like I said, man, we're, we're not in a hurry. Oh, good Lord. We're not in a hurry here. We want to make some excellent fish tacos. Boom. Okay. Look at that. Nice and breaded. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing this until all the fish is breaded. You guys don't need to watch that, so hold, stand by. All right, guys, I got done making my huge mess here. Oven is ready, all the fish is on. Look at that. All the fish is on the, on the plate. I got my, I got my beagle here. He's in my damn way. Whew, that's hot. So, get that situated there. So, I'm gonna bake these. Uh, where's the timer? But timer. 12 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna bake them 12 minutes at 350 degrees. And let me clean up my mess and I'll get back to you. All right, guys. So while that's cooking, we got I got cleaned up. We got nine minutes left. Okay, so on my fish tacos, I'm a coleslaw guy. I love coleslaw. So let's make up our coleslaw. So you can buy the, the coleslaw mix at the store. It's 
nothing fancy, just, you know, cabbage, some carrots. That's gonna be enough, I'll save that for later. And I love lighthouse stuff. I love it. Especially their blue cheese, that stuff is dynamite. So, now don't go too crazy on this. This is a lot of sugar here, unless you want a lot of sugar. And a, a little bit goes a long way. Oop, oop, oop. You can always add, look at that, making a mess again. You can always add more coleslaw if you got too much dip in there or sauce. So mix that up. I wish you guys could smell what's coming out of that oven. Holy buckets, that smells good. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Just a hair more. That salad's look just a scotch dry. That coleslaw does. Oh, come on, break off. There we go. You don't want to overwhelm the flavor of the fish or the other seasonings. You know, it's okay. That's how I like it, my coleslaw. Okay, so make sure it's all mixed up good. And that looks good to me. All right, so we're gonna wait for the fish to come out. I gotta clean up that mess before I put the top on. We'll wait for the fish. We'll prep a couple tacos. And that's how I do my fish tacos. All right, so timer went off. I got them out, made sure they were, they were cooked. Everything's cooked good. We got some taco shells. Ooh, come off. Sometimes they stick, sometimes they don't. Pull a couple pieces of meat off of there. Here's one taco. Oh, here's a big long piece. Ooh. They got bigger, wider taco shells, but I like these little ones. So, wipe my hands on my pants. There we go. Some sharp cheddar cheese now on there. A little bit more for that one. I love cheese. Can you take it? Coleslaw. Get it piled in there. Boom. That's how I do my fish tacos. The kids like them. I like them. The wife don't like fish, so she don't eat them. She'll have a she'll have a, a vegetarian taco, fish taco with no no fish in it and then I'll crack my beer then I'll eat my tacos hit that subscribe button you guys have a great Sunday afternoon